Hello there. I hope you're all doing well. And it's holiday season. It's December 2022. And um, the topic is how to do winter, how to have a happy winter, uh, joyous celebrations in the holidays, and counteract a little bit the um, potential uh, overwhelm, stress, and um, overindulgence of this time of the year. But of course, this is relevant for any time of the year, but it is especially interesting for the holiday seasons or any time that you are a little bit overwhelmed and it's cold. So today, actually, it's quite warm and we've been having a very warm winter here. Well, I live in a cold climate, but um, the winter has been very mild, but uh, it's going to get a little uh, colder. So, yeah. So, as usual, this is conversational. I, I have a paper in front of me just to, so that I remember, but these are topics that I, I, I know very well and I use it. This is experiential. It's not me reading something that I don't know about. So that's the way that I like to do. So yeah, let's do this. So the f these are my like seven tips for, you know, being resilient in the midst of chaos, which sometimes happens, yeah, or many times. So the first thing to, to, to be aware of is that nothing can be done if you're not kind to yourself. Kind, kindness um, and gentleness is the key to all of this because this is not about forcing you to do anything. It's just, it's just being kind. Being kind does not mean being lazy or just being kind in a way that like, oh, okay, I'll just do whatever I want. No, that's, that's not it. It's being kind in a way that um, if you have a focus of um, supporting yourself and taking good care of yourself, but you are not able to do it, it's okay. As long as you keep the focus, you know, because this is not, not about being lazy and not doing things. If we want to achieve a certain level of well-being inside of us, despite the chaos around us, there are certain things that we have to do. But if we fall off the wagon once in a while, it is okay. So, and especially the holidays, a time, okay, I've got the sun coming just to celebrate the winter. And uh, the holidays is a time of overindulgence. So, um, it's special. There's just it's just one time in the year, so it is okay. So that's the starting point. Yes, be focused on staying happy and feeling good, but also it's okay if that doesn't happen all the time. There's no need to be too strict. You know what? For example, when we go and have lunch and din uh, meal with our loved ones, maybe they don't eat the way that we eat. Is it important to force our uh, our ways of eating on them? I don't think so. It really isn't the time for that. We are all different. We are all on different paths, and it is important that we allow each one of us to to eat the way that we want. Um, because if we want others to accept the way we eat, we also need to accept the, <laughs> the way that they eat. I think that's that's uh, that's key and you know it's just not the time for those kinds of discussions i know there is a lot of that going on because more and more people have their specific way of eating but let's just make it a non-issue we i take care of the way i eat that's all it doesn't matter it's not the time to impose my ways of eating to others well i never imposed anyway but that just because I never had any issues around that, but um, I know it can be difficult to other people. But rule number one, don't impose your thoughts and ideas on food because food is a very sensitive topic. If you don't want others to pay too much attention to what you eat, don't pay too much attention to what they eat, basically. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, 
if we eat, when we overeat, whatever it is that is like very fatty, has too much fat or too much sugar, one thing that counteracts all of that and balances your system is greens. Any sort, any type of greens. Um, I suggest green salads because fresh is best, fresh and raw is best if your digestive system can digest raw food. Otherwise, cooked greens or in the absence of any of those, powders or tablets, spirulina tablets, moringa powder, anything that is green, preferably seasonal greens, obviously um, raw or cooked, but if that is not available, then powders, green powders. And you will see that there's, it, there's a big difference in the way that you will feel after a meal if you include greens. This is something that you have to experience. Again, I'm not here to tell you the science, this is something that I have experienced over and over again, and I'm sure there's science to prove this. Um, it will balance your sugar levels, it will balance, you know, it will feed your liver so it is able to digest the fats that sometimes we eat in excess, even if it's healthy. Imagine that you, you like coconut oil and you eat a little bit too much of something with coconut oil or, you know, coconut oil, an oil with sugar, like a dessert. And uh, even if it's healthy, imagine dates and an oily nut or something. That's quite heavy for the system. So, but if you counteract, if you eat greens before, your digestive system will make it, it will, will find it much, much easier to digest. And um, the other thing, actually, if on the same uh, about food, is that is intermittent fasting. I think there's enough evidence now that it is important to give the body a rest, that because digestion, the digestive um, process is one of the most energy consuming in the body. It really is, is thought and digestion. So if you know that you're going to be uh, to have dinner, for example, you can skip lunch or the following day skip breakfast. This is something that many people, including myself, do like pretty much every day, but you don't have to force yourself to do it. It will come intuitively, your body will tell you. Nobody needed to tell me to do intermittent fasting. I started doing it naturally many years ago. <clears throat> so I suggest that, that you follow what your body really is telling you to do. But just be aware that when you're like full and you didn't digest the food very well, it's good to skip the next meal or skip the, the the meal before if you think that your body will benefit from this you can make it a habit to skip breakfast or skip dinner and again you'll find a lot of research a lot a lot of um, testimonials also about intermittent fasting is the natural way of eating as well for human beings whatever whatever diet humans were doing in the past many different diets in different parts of the world depending on the climate one thing was for sure, in most climates, the food was not available all year round, 24-7, like it is now. So there were periods of hunger, there were periods uh, that we just could not eat uh, a lot. And we, we eat way, much, much more than we ate in the past, which doesn't, doesn't mean that the past is perfect and now it's all horrible. It's not like that. but. The human body needs to rest. Everything needs to be well digested so that we can perform at our best. And you will probably notice that when you are a little hungry, that's when you perform the best. Not too hungry, but not too full. So yeah, intermittent fasting. And um, of course you've heard this many times, prioritize sleep. And um, I myself was never a very good sleeper since birth due to um, different situations, but um, and I've I've noticed later on how how it affected my health. When you have a good night's sleep, 
the, the world is different, isn't it, than when we don't have a good night's sleep. It's just a completely different story. The positivity that you bring into your day is much higher than when you had a bad night, bad sleep. And um, But it's a delicate subject to talk about because when people say, oh, sleep is a priority, if you don't sleep, you can't function. For people who have insomnia or do not sleep well, that is even more stressful. It puts more stress isn't it, in, in, into us. It's like, oh my God, I know that I'm not going to be able to sleep, so that my health will never improve. This is horrible. I cannot sleep. And we get more and more stressed when we go to bed. So I, I know that very well because when I did not sleep, I, I spent some years basically sleeping a few hours a day. And when I heard like, you have to sleep, you have to sleep, I just get even more stressed. So one, I'm sorry, I'm flushing, it's a bit warm. And um, but there are ways of little steps that we can take to make sure that uh, we, we sleep at least a little bit better. One is obvious, don't sleep before going to bed. Don't go to bed very hungry, that's another thing. And get away from the computers two hours uh, um, before. But one thing, before going to sleep, but one thing that very few people uh, talk about and I find very, very important is to get sunlight in the morning because that will set the melatonin uh, cycle, the circadian, circadian rhythm. Um, if you start with sun in the first hours of waking, it will set the circadian rhythm in such a way that you will fall asleep 12 to 16 hours before you get the sun. You can also go and check um, scientific studies on this, but you don't even have to, to to check the scientific studies if you're not so inclined is just try the first first two hours of the day you look at the sun not not look at the sun directly obviously you look at the sky you have you get out of your flat or house or if you cannot do that you open the window this makes such a difference because you can take all the pills all the plants all the do everything but if you're before going to bed but if you, your circadian rhythm is not working nothing will work ever so this is a i don't know why it is a secret a bit of a secret nobody really talks about it or very few people but i tell you it's more effective than or at least it needs to be done along with the herbs and all the other things that you're doing. Get sun exposure in the first two hours of waking up. And this alone is like a tip that will make you more confident that your own body can heal itself because then you allow your body to produce its own melatonin instead of uh, counting on taking external melatonin, which in my understanding, it's not really the best way to go around about it. Yeah, because then your body is not, if you take melatonin all the time, it's a hormone, it's not a plant, it's a hormone. And if you take it all the time, then your body will not produce it anymore because it's receiving it from an external source. So. I wanted to say that because there's a lot of melatonin being taken and I do not agree with that. So back to the winter and the stressful times, perhaps, I mean, some, some people don't have stress, which is awesome, but the cold, the cold and the transition and these darker months are the ideal time for, well, cocooning in a way, but also to take all the vitamins, the minerals, the elixirs that you have at home because it's the time of the year where the body is struggling the most. It's either indoors with little movement or outside can be cold, windy and all of that. 
this in the northern hemisphere of course and um, I mean December northern hemisphere but winter is in, in other times in the southern hemisphere but in December now it is the time of the December January and February there's very little sun so and the darkness is not conducive to feeling feeling very good so the body is struggling a bit all the vitamins and minerals and uh, elixirs that you have at home that you're always saying that you're going to take but you don't take take them now because they will be very very important my favorites at the moment there are many many and i'm not here to tell you what you should take but um what, whatever i mention you just go to your local shop or your uh, online shop and see if you can find wherever you're listening from if you're from switzerland which is where i am anything that i mentioned in these videos will be available not everything no but some things will be available um, in my shop radiantbeauty.ch and it will be linked in the description box below but if you if you're not in Switzerland, uh, you just find these things online on your on your local um, health food store or anywhere else. So, my this last year I've been uh, experimenting and loving Anima Mundi elixirs. They are fun to use, which is very important because if they are not fun to use, I will not use them. Yeah, I've come to a point where I don't know. I need a, a little bit of like a beautiful bottle or something like that to inspire me to take remedies like um, herbal remedies or anything or something like that so i find them super uh, cute there's just a personal opinion and you might think otherwise they are very high quality and the formulations are very very interesting so i've been using especially the soma elixir which is a blend of medicinal mushrooms for me medicinal mushrooms are a miracle are magical they are not magic mushrooms they are medicinal mushrooms they are very magical and what medicinal mushrooms do to your body is that it creates that resiliency that is needed in times of turbulence so it helps us to keep the calm amongst the chaos and I think this is probably the most important thing that we have to to try and achieve achieve is not the, the best word but try to attain in this times not only in the winter but in the times that we are living is to keep calm amidst the chaos to keep that center amidst the dance of life and um, medicinal mushrooms are very very good for that they also uh, strengthen the immune system not boost but strengthen the immune system strengthen the nervous system which are key for us to keep ourselves well and so these are um, really really great allies for the winter and some of the mushrooms are also very good for the skin for example chaga and um, and they're also very good to let to level the to harmonize the blood sugar levels which again affect the skin many beautiful um, properties that this wonderful medicinal mushrooms have go and do your research i have improved a lot my health the last uh, months also due to this beautiful mushrooms but I'm not a doctor and I'm just talking about my, I'm just sharing you my experience. Really don't just do your own experiment, talk to your doctor, your herbalist, anybody. I am not an expert. I am an expert on my own body and that's all that I can be an expert on. And uh, the other thing, the other product that I like a lot from Anima Mundi is the black elderberry syrup. It's delicious. For me, it's absolutely del delicious. It has the elderberry, which is very well known as a strengthener of the immune system and also a booster when you have caught something. 
and it also has um, medicinal mushrooms as well. So I think it's a perfect combination, it tastes delicious and that is a very important part of it. And um, yeah, it's all vegan and it, it's all wonderful. So I love that, uh, the Soma mushroom as I take it um, every day and uh, the black elderberry um, syrup I take it when I am feeling a little bit weaker or I might have caught something. And um, uh, the last, not the last, but another way of boosting or strengthening your immune system and your mood, in this case your mood more, is aromas, you know, in the form of essential oils or hydrosols or anything, but it needs to be natural because fragrances that are synthetic do not affect your mood. Um, you know, they, they might smell wonderful for you, and uh, but they do not have any effect on the brain. Only the natural uh, essential oils or aromas uh, have an effect on your mood, on your brain, on your in the whole system. So one tip that I like to give, and it's very, very effective, is to drop some essential oils on the, your shower floor just before going into the shower. So you switch on the, um, the water, uh, warm, even if you have cold showers, just let it run a little hot, put some essential oils on the shower floor, and that creates a beautiful aromatic experience like a Turkish bath. You can choose any of the essential oils of your preferences. In the morning, of course, more the, the stimulating ones if you want that. In the evening, the relaxing ones. I tell you, this is like such a simple tip and you just need one or two drops really. So a small bottle will last you. So it creates beautiful experience, um, much more interesting than the shower gel that smells like I don't know what, even if it's natural, um, the essential oil is just the easiest and the most economical really because it's just one or two drops. And um, then yeah, if you don't want to have hot shower, you just uh, turn to the cold water, but in the beginning just put the hot water so that it creates that uh, vapor you know just to create the so that the, the essential oils can release it their aromas it's a beautiful beautiful way of stimulating you or relaxing you and just giving you a really truly true beautiful sense of well-being and resilience as well and um, the last uh, tip that I want to give is skincare because I do have a natural uh, skincare shop here in Switzerland and I have found that just um, the fact that I'm taking good care of my skin and touching my face with gentleness and kindness and presence above all has given me uh, it helps me my sense of well-being quite a bit and so when you're doing your skincare routine, make it pleasurable and also be present to it. Not just, you know, just putting creams or cleaning your face, putting creams and just not paying attention to it, but just be with your face. Really, really hold a lot of tension here. I mean, each person is in different areas, but here is a very common one and here in the eyes. And of course here at the back, so pay attention to it, see, just hold your face, just see how it, it is. That alone, even if you do, if we only have five, ten minutes, it just <laughs> immediately makes you kind of breathe deeper. Breath is a wonderful, wonderful tool that I'm not speaking, I'm not talking about it this time, but it's a wonderful tool. But you can take some deep in-breaths and out-breaths while you're just touching your face and seeing where the areas of tension are. Just be with it. You don't need to do anything. Just be with it. And um, use your favorite skincare products. 
you know that you can find beautiful natural skincare that are effective on the, um, my shop in Switzerland or the shop wherever you live there's a lot of alternatives now fortunately I do prefer the no fillers and natural products that's my preference I don't want bulking agents or anything it's like my food I eat as pure as I can or just because I like it I'm not going to go into the arguments or is it better or worse but I do prefer um, the natural aromas of everything rather than the aromas of um, um, petrol and synthetic aromas etc it's just a personal preference and uh, so as much as I can as everything is natural and that gives me uh, this wonderful um, uh, sense of well-being as well and yeah, that's, that's our, these are my seven tips for the winter or any time that you're feeling overwhelmed, but especially the cold winters. And um, the key here is resilience, like kindness, self-love, resilience, keeping centered in the midst of life. So whatever ha happens outside, it doesn't affect you in a negative way because you're there you're you're like a tree you know deeply rooted and the branches are on the external but inside the trunk and the roots are deeply deeply secure under under the ground so that's that for me, that's how I see it inside me. If I'm strong, resilient, calm, anything can happen on the outside. And I'm good. So there's help, both internally and externally. And uh, we can use all these tools to make our lives a little bit better. Share with your friends if you find them this tips helpful and subscribe to my channel um, I'm intending to be more regular here on YouTube again thank you bye bye stay well bye bye